Today is April the 12th. Welcome to the press conference organized by the Information Office of Guangzhou Municipal People's Government. Currently, China has made substantial progress in containing the epidemic and the restoring of the social and economic development. However, we're still facing some of the uncertainties brought by the global pandemic. On April the 9th, General Secretary Xi Jinping organized the executive meeting of State Council. He emphasized that we have to pay attention to the changes around the globe and make sure that we take targeted measures to curb the imported infection and prevent the domestic resurgence. We have to make sure that all the measures can be implemented in a detailed way. On April the 9th, the provincial government has organized a meeting. The meeting emphasized that we have to take strict measures to make sure that we can curb the imported infections. So we have to implement a closed-loop management and to understand the health conditions of all the inbound travelers. We need to do what we can to curb the spread of the virus. Recently, the mayor, Wen Guohui, had hosted many meetings to discuss the epidemic prevention and control in Guangzhou City. And yesterday, they had another meeting to discuss the current situation. As of now, we are at a crucial stage in containing the epidemic. We have to continue to shoulder responsibility, and also it is a test for the governance capability of Guangzhou City. We have to unite our thoughts and actions and dare to bear the responsibilities and take further measures to curb the spread of the virus in order to further implement the important speeches and the spirit made by General Secretary Xi Jinping and follow the requirement of the provincial government we have to respond to the social concerns. So today we are hosting the 73rd press conference on COVID-19 prevention and control. And today we are honored to have the mayor of Guangzhou City, Mr. Wen Guohui, to join us. Also, we have Mr. Liu Baochun from Foreign Affairs Office, Mr. Tang Xiaoping from Guangzhou Health Commission, and the second level inspector from the Public Security Bureau. Later, they will take your questions. First, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Wen Guohui. Friends from the media, good morning. First of all, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to your long-term support and interest to the epidemic prevention and control in Guangzhou City. By taking this opportunity, together with my colleagues, I would like to brief you on the current situation of epidemic prevention and control as well as the economic and social development in Guangzhou City. First of all, I will give you a general update of the current situation. First, we have made notable progress in epidemic prevention and control. As of April the 11th, total confirmed cases in Guangzhou City stood at 479 among which 347 are domestic cases. We have also 119 imported cases, 13 related cases. Among the 479 confirmed cases, 430 were cured and discharged from the hospital. 48 people are still hospitalized, one fatal case. Among these 48 people, 38 
are regular cases, two in severe cases, and five in mild conditions. Among the 347 domestic cases, one fatal cases, one still in hospitalized. All the other critical cases are cured and discharged. Among the 119 imported cases, seven people are entering Guangzhou city, 13 people entering in other cities in Guangdong province, and 59 people entering in China in other cities of China. Among 119 imported cases, 94 with Chinese nationalities and 25 with foreign nationalities. Among the 119 imported cases, 30 people from UK, 19 from US, 13 from Philippines, 9 from Nigeria, 7 from France. Among these imported cases with foreign nationalities, 9 from Nigeria, 3 from Angola, 2 from Congo, 2 from Niger, France, Brazil, UK, Australia, Serbia, Ethiopia, Burkina, Madagascar, one respectively. This is the first update. Second, it's about the risks about the imported infection. We have to take effective measures to curb the imported infection. This is our top priority to curb the imported infection. Start from February the 17th. We have taken in 443 foreign airlines. Altogether, we're receiving over 56,000 inbound travelers, over 70,000 people entering to Guangzhou, and the rest entering in cities outside of Guangzhou city in the province. And also, we are bringing over a thousand people from other cities back to Guangzhou city. Now we have seen a rapid spread of the disease in other countries. Guangzhou as an international hub, we are seeing a surge of imported cases. We are paying close attention to this imported infection, we have to strengthen our efforts in joint prevention and control and take strict measures for the health management so that we can mitigate the risk brought by the imported infection. We identified the first imported cases on March the 15th. For all the 190 imported cases identified in Guangzhou city, are screened by the Guangzhou municipal government. I'm referring to the 119 imported cases and the 13 related cases. The Guangzhou municipal government has taken proactive measures to screen out these people. So first, 
we have ad adopted a screening. At the entry port, we found 63 suspected cases. And also, we are pulling some people in a collective centralized quarantine, and we identified 43 cases. And also, we are screening the close contacts. Six people were identified. And also, we found six confirmed cases from the communities. At the same time, we are closely monitoring the situation in the fever clinics. And we found uh, three people from the communities. That's what I'm referring to proactive measures taken by the government. We have to do what we can to ensure full guarantee. For example, in Baiyun International Airport, we have a one plus nine model. The deputy mayor will take the lead for the task force. For example, we will check the inbound travelers, and also we establish a special group. We have ensured our work can be implemented in an effective manner. At community level, we have over 8,000 officials to go down to the communities. And also, we are taking a lot of efforts to transfer the suspected uh, patients. And also, we arrange a group of translators to provide support. We are also doing a lot of work to ensure administrative support. We arrange 260 vehicles and identify 147 designated hotels for isolation and quarantine. We have strengthened our policy education. Start from January the 28th, we have hosted uh, 73 press conference. And also, we are providing a lot of trainings and the press with 65 consulars. Also, we are translating the prevention and control guidelines into multiple languages. At the same time, we are formulating life guidance. As I've just said, we also launch, roll out a three all-rounded coverage. First, the nuclear acid test coverage. Start from March the 21st, all the inbound travelers in Guangzhou city from overseas destinations as well as from Macau and Hong Kong, if these people had overseas travel histories, we will conduct nuclear acid tax to all of them. Start from March the 27th, people who are entering to Guangzhou All of these people will be received nuclear acid test. And also we are launching the full coverage of the centralized isolation and quarantine. All of these people will be sent to designated areas for quarantine. Start from March the 22nd, we conducted the 14-day retrospective screening and testing. That is to say, start from March the 8th, if 
we have some people entering into Guangzhou city after March the 8th. All of these people will be receiving nuclear acid test. Especially for people who had overseas travels in the past 14 days, regardless of their nationalities, all of these people will be sent to the quarantine center for nuclear acid test. And also we will conduct the throat swap testing for all of these people for free. Also, we will gather information from all areas to understand the detailed travel information for these people. And also, we will have a grid style and massive scale of screening to make sure that everyone is testing and also we are launching a closed loop management for four links. The first part we will focus on the airline screening. When the airlines enter to Guangzhou, all the information will be reported to the customs and we will bring all of these people to centralized isolation and quarantine. And also we will strengthen our efforts in port quarantine to make sure that we do a good job in health management so that we can cut off the transmission route of the virus. And also we will bring all these suspected cases to centralized points. We make sure that we have sufficient transportation capacity to transport all the inbound travelers. At the same time, we will conduct temperature check for all of these inbound travelers. At the same time, we will conduct uh, disinfection in public facilities. And also in the hospitals, we will connect the information of the patients so that we can standardize the uh, management of the suspected cases and the fever patients. And also we will track down on the close contacts and we will bring these close contacts to quarantine. This is the second information I would like to release. And the third information is about our screening work to people who arrive in Guangzhou from high-risk airlines and high-risk countries. As I have just said, for Guangzhou City, we have done a 14-day retrospective screening with this screening, as well as the epidemiology investigations, we will analyze all the issues and problems we found with evaluation of the experts in order to protect people's safety and health and to curb the spread of the virus start from April the 5th. We will focus on the screening and the testing to people who are arriving in Guangzhou city from the high-risk airlines and high-risk countries. Especially to those who are in Guangzhou from high-risk countries. This is based on the epidemiology investigations. So we will send, we will collectively manage those people who are staying in Guangzhou from the high risk countries. 
we have already screened 4,600 foreigners who are staying in Guangzhou from those high-risk countries. And also, we are running NAT to the close contacts of these people. And also, we will take strict measures to manage the inbound travelers with the high-risk airlines. We will focus on the inbound travelers who are taking planes to Guangzhou from the period of March the 7th to March the 27th, regardless of their nationalities. We have screened 1,557 inbound travelers to date. For people who are staying in Guangzhou from the high-risk countries, we will include these people into our health management mechanism. For such a short time, we have conducted a large-scale screening of this group of people. And all of the confirmed cases and suspected cases have been reported to the government. This has showcased that we have a very good effect in the prevention and control in Guangzhou city. During in our work, we treat Chinese people and foreigners as equals. We have improved our information communication system. We offer necessary support to these people. And we will follow the principle of for centralization to provide necessary support to this group of people. This is the information I want to release. And also, we understand the current situation of foreigners in Guangzhou. For Guangzhou City, we have a very frequent international collaboration, and also we are an important stop for the Belt and Road Initiative. For such a long time, many foreigners live and work in Guangzhou City, and they are also com they are coming from different parts of the world. In the past, uh, first I would like to brief you on some of the numbers. In the past three years, we have over 2.9 million people travel in and out of Guangzhou city. So this is the um, inbound and outbound information about the foreigners. For Asia countries, 1.7 million people entering into Guangzhou and 1.6 million people exit Guangzhou. Back in 2019, 1.8 million people traveled into Guangzhou and 1.7 million people exit Guangzhou. For African countries, we have 362,000 travel into Guangzhou and 330,000 people exiting Guangzhou. And also, I would like to brief you on the regular residency in Guangzhou city for the foreigners. I will give you an update in 2019. In 2019, we have over 86,000 people living in Guangzhou with residence per permit. 
6,128 people in Japan, from Japan, over 5,000 from India, and over 5,000 people from the United States, and over 3,000 people from Russia. And over 13,000 Africans who have been living and working in Guangzhou City as of 2019. So this is a normalizing situation in Guangzhou. As of April the 10th, we have 30,768 foreigners living in Guangzhou as of April the 10th. Due to the epidemic, um, some foreigners are not able to come back to Guangzhou City. Otherwise, we will have over 50,000 people who have been staying in Guangzhou right now, including 2,700 in US, 1,400 in Canada, and 4,550 from African countries. So as I believe all of you are concerned about this data, that's why I make this briefing. And the fifth information is about the business resumption. We earnestly implement the decisions and um, speeches made by General Secretary Xi Jinping on epidemic prevention and control with social and economic development. We have closely followed the requirements of the provincial government and focus on both the epidemic prevention and control and the business resumption. We also providing a lot of support to the enterprises and to uh, release their financial burdens and to do what we can to bring their life back to normal. We have also set up a special mechanism to serve the enterprises. We have dedicated uh, policies and the leaders to serve the enterprises. We also publish 48 measures to stabilize the employment and create more jobs. So what we are doing right now is to improve the business environment and to ensure that all the supplies uh, can be provided to the enterprises. So we will resume the business in an orderly manner. At the beginning of the outbreak of the epidemic, On a daily basis, the face mask production capacity is is 600,000. 600, but as of now, um, the face mask production capacity is 23 million. That is to say, we have already increased 37 folds of the capacity of the face mask production. And also, we are doing what we can to ensure the supplies of the PPEs, the protective suits, goggles, and other medical supplies. We have fulfilled the goals that has been assigned by the national level. I will also brief you on the situation of the business resumption. For the resumption rate as of April the 11th, among the 4,500 enterprises above designated size, the work 
resumption rate is 100%. And also for the convention um, services, the resumption rate is 100%. 607 market we could see the resumption rate is 96%. For the construction sites, um, the resumption rate is 99.9%. Now I would like to talk about the production resumption. And also we could see from April the 7th to April the 9th, for the usage of the electricity in 2020, the rate is only down by 20%. And for the automobile industry, the usage rate is down by 3%. And the chemicals industry, the usage rate is increased by 6%. So if we talk about the resumption of the production, we will refer to the data of the electricity usage. And also, we are also referring to the invoice rates. We could see that we have increased the invoice insurance by 4.1% this year. So actually, compared to last year, we have increased by 4%. In terms of sales, Invoice has been issued with the value of 1.55 trillion yuan. I would like to brief you on the situation in March. In March, the domestic pandemic has been basically contained and most of the work has to resume their normal operation. As we can compare with the invoice insurance from March to February, we could see the insurance rate is increased by 3%. That is to say, for the number of insurance companies we have uh, reduced by 2%. However, the number of invoices insuring has been increased by 4%. Under the mechanism of normalizing prevention control, we have to accelerate the restoration of the social order. We will follow the important guidance made by General Secretary Xi Jinping and focus on the epidemic prevention and control as well as the economic and social development. We will do what we can to ensure people's needs of the livelihood can be guaranteed. Still, we have to pay extreme emphasis on curbing the imported infection and prevent the domestic resurgence. At the same time, we have to increase our sense of responsibility and to protect the sudden gate of our nation. Uh, actually, we have uh, published a guidance on the imported infection, and we will treat all the foreigners as equals with Chinese. There are several measures we will be rolling out. First, we will continue to evaluate the level of risks when appropriate. 
with the change of the epidemic as well as the epidemiology investigation, we have to evaluate the level of risks of countries, foreign countries as well as the airlines. We strengthen the health management for people who are arriving in Guangzhou city from high-risk countries and high-risk airlines, all of the, these people will be receiving nucleic acid tests. This is on top of our normalizing prevention and control. And also, we will protect the rights of foreigners, and we will open up the testing points, and also we will guide the foreigners to take nucleic acid test in Guangzhou city. We have already established 11 designated uh, testing points. So we have um, one designated testing points at each one of the districts in Guangzhou city. We will guide all the foreigners to receive the virus testing in these testing points. And we will strengthen our building of the network of health management. And we will provide more translation services to these foreigners. And we will work closely with these people and reach out um, to the consulars who are based in Guangzhou city. And we will interpret the latest policies to all of those counselors. At the same time, we will strengthen our international collaboration and offer support when necessary. And also, we will offer help for them for government procurement as well. And also, we have to take effective measures to prevent the domestic epidemic researches during the work of the epidemic prevention and control, all the Guangzhou residents are shoulder great responsibilities. They have made their own contributions to contain the virus. They have overcome the difficulties and showcase uh, the spirit of Guangzhou people. By taking this opportunity, I would like to call on all of the Guangzhou residents to strengthen their personal hygiene and cooperate with the government. Please wash your hands frequently, wear masks, avoid gatherings, and reduce the infection risks. Later on, we will continue to clarify the responsibilities at different residential areas and the communities and check temperatures for all the inbound travelers and to facilitate the business resumption. And also at the same time, we will conduct these infections to all the public areas to provide a safe and secure environment for our people. And we will do what we can to boost the high quality development, even though the epidemic has brought a lot of challenges to our economic and social development. We will continue to focus on the important measures taken by the government and respond to the call from the State Council. And uh, we will do what we can to accelerate the economic and the social development. For the new models that has been arising from the epidemic, we will make sure that we can catch up with the economic development. And we'll continue to expand our investments and to encourage the capitals at all levels to make investment to infrastructures so that we can unleash the potential, unleash the potentials and to build a new highland for reform and opening up and continue to make Guangzhou into the one of the most favorable investment destination around the globe. We will also strengthen the competitiveness 
of our industrial chain and make Guangzhou into a city of innovation and science tech hub in the world. We will benchmark the highest standard and to make arrangements for the city and to improve the competitiveness of the city at large. At the same time, same time we have to protect people's basic interest and do what we can to improve the well-being of our people to make sure that these people will fall into difficulties because of the epidemic. So for the government, we will cut off the expenditures and also reserve more fund to provide support to the enterprises. We will resume the school and business by different level of risks and by different time suite. And also we will offer more help for the graduates and the veterans. And also we will offer a lot of uh, support to people in impoverished regions. And we will grant subsidies to people in difficulties. Also, we will focus on the production of the supplies as well as the daily necessities so that we can ensure the supply. This is my briefing. Thank you. Dear friends and mayor, just give us some updates on the situation in Guangzhou city. And he actually emphasized um, six areas of work that has been done by the Guangzhou municipal government. And also he talked about a lot of measures to curb the imported infections and the prevention of the domestic epidemic resurgence. And also he emphasized that uh, we should resume the work and the business in an orderly manner and to restore the economic and social development. All of these issues are of great importance from the public. Thank you for his briefing. Now the floor is open for questions. So for journalists who want to raise a question, please identify who you are before you raise the question. Xinhua News Agency. My question is to the Director of the Foreign Affairs Offices. Uh, the question is specific to the prevention of the imported infection. So what measures have been taken by the Foreign Affairs Office to ensure that the rights of the foreigners is equal as the Chinese people? First of all, thank you uh, for your question. Thank you uh, for your contribution for the international collaboration between Guangzhou and other countries. First of all, I'd like to thank for your long-term support and contribution in this regard. I would like to answer your question in the following aspects. First, we are not taking any differentiated uh, measures to the foreigners. That is to say, for the inbound travelers, regardless of your age, gender, and the nationalities, we will take the same prevention and control measures to all of them. In accordance with level of risk, with the recommendation from the experts as well as the results of the epidemiology studies, we have taken some measures for these inbound travelers who are coming from the high-risk countries and the airlines. We also publish prevention and control guidelines in multiple languages. Second, 
we will spare no efforts to treat the patient. We are centralizing our patients' experts' resources and the treatment, which is the four centralization policy. Uh, we have uh, established designated areas to treat all of these patients. We also offer psychological counseling to the patients. We also equip all of those hospitals with uh, translators and interpreters so that we can provide more humanitarian services to all of these foreigners. As of 8 o'clock this morning, we have 119 uh, imported cases. So I would say 89 people out of these 119 imported, infection, uh, imported cases have been cured and discharged from the hospital. And also we have established a, a number of isolation points and the testing points. Later on, we will guide all the foreigners to receive virus testing in those testing centers. For close contacts of the imported cases, we will conduct epidemiological investigations to these people so that we can eradicate the risks of infection. And at the same time, we are providing Guangdong Health Code to all the people who are staying in Guangzhou City. So we are actually providing multilingual apps to these people who are staying in Guangzhou. So if they have any health issues, they can report their personal information to the government. Fourth, we provide more education and guidance to these foreigners who are staying in Guangzhou City. Since the outbreak of the epidemic, we have released prevention and control guidelines in many languages. So we're offering a lot of information to these people. We are continue to collaborate with 65 counselors, which are based in Guangzhou city. And we are working with the Chamber of Commerce in Guangzhou city. We provide them the latest policies and information released by the government. At the same time, we also respond to their needs and help them to tackle the current difficulties. At the same time, we offer a lot of support to the officials who are working in the consular space in Guangzhou. We are making a lot of arrangements for them to come back to their regional countries and offer a lot of help in containing the virus. Fifth, we are continuing our efforts in international collaboration. We strengthen our communication with the consulars in Guangzhou city. We are doing what we can to offer donations of the supplies. As of now, we have made a lot of donations in six countries and the 13 French cities. As the situation develops, we will continue to donate the, the second and the third batches of the supplies to more countries and cities. At the same time, we will also offer more information sharing to other countries. Back in 2003, we accumulated valuable experiences in counteract SARS. And also we have a number of renowned experts. So some of these people are actually sharing their experiences with foreign counterparts. 
we also participate in some international forum. As of now, we have attended seven international forums on COVID-19. We introduced our valuable experiences and gave them a lot of guidance. So what we are doing is highly appreciated by other countries. The mayor Wen Guohui also held video conference with his counterpart in our friendship cities. So both sides have sharing their experiences in fighting against COVID-19. I would like to emphasize that Guangzhou has treated all the foreigners who are staying in Guangzhou in as equals. We will not implement any differentiated measures to these people. Guangzhou is an open, inclusive city. We have zero tolerance to all the discriminatory behaviors and words. This is the principle we have been sticking to. Guangzhou has over 2,300 years of history, and we are always at the front runners. We are always the front runners in inter international collaboration. In the past, because of the language barriers, maybe there may be some misunderstanding. We will strengthen these weak links and to adjust our measures. So we have set up a special task force to fill this loophole. We are firmly against any behaviors that has been distorting the work that has been done by Guangzhou City. I would like, I would like to call on all the foreigners, just as local residents, to respond to the requirements of epidemic prevention and control in Guangzhou. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Guangzhou is the international hub. As we just said, we have over 65 consulars in Guangzhou city. And on one hand, we have to focus on the epidemic prevention and control. On the other hand, we have to strengthen our international collaboration to fight against the virus. Next question, please. With people daily. My question is to uh, Mr. Zhang from the Guangzhou CDC. Epidemiology investigation is a very important part. So what measures has been taken by the Guangzhou CTC? Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Zhang from Guangzhou CDC for more introduction. As of now, uh, Guangzhou has entered into a stage to curb the imported infection and prevent the domestic epidemic resurgence. We have established a special task force. We have already hosted a uh, press conference to uh, brief you on the current situation. And also we have done a lot of work in the epidemiological investigation to all the imported cases. After analysis, uh, we identify um, high risk countries as well as the high risk airlines. And we are conducting an overall screening to all of the inbound travelers from these countries and airlines. At the same time, we analyze their personal uh, data and also we identify some key uh, public uh, areas. At the same time, we are also uh, doing a lot of uh, epidemiological investigations to related cases for the imported infection, and we are continue our efforts to conduct the large-scale screening. And later on, we also identify a number of asymptomatic cases. Uh, last time when I was in this press conference, I said um, 
For Guangzhou City, we have actually set up uh, three defensive lines. Uh, first, it is actually the testing and quarantine at the entry point. And the second, after March the 22nd, we will conduct a retrospective screening and testing for people who are arriving in Guangzhou from March the 8th. And third, we will continue to roll out the large-scale screening to communities as well as the fever clinics. And we will run nuclear acid tests to all of those people who are staying in those uh, quarantine sites. I would like to focus on our second link which is the retrospective uh, screening and the testing, which are focusing on the inbound travelers who are entering into Guangzhou from March the 8th. And this notification is actually published on the March of the 23rd. On March the 23rd, we actually identify one confirmed cases uh, from these inbound travelers. And later on, four more cases had been identified. For all of these confirmed cases, we conducted epidemiological investigation immediately. And we found these people actually dined in the MR food at a small restaurants in Guangzhou. Actually, it is a difficult task for us to track down on these people. Sometimes we have some language barriers with these um, foreign inbound travelers. It is very difficult for us to do this investigation of those people. On average, we spent, uh, we spent uh, four to five hours to conduct epidemiological investigation to each single case of the imported uh, infection. And for the three confirmed cases who had been to the restaurants, and actually these three people um, are not able to describe where they are. But fortunately, these people were able to provide a name card for the restaurant, which is the MR food, because these three people are saying that they, they actually bought takeouts from MR food. So we immediately visited this specific small restaurants, and we also alert the restaurant owners that there have been some confirmed cases visiting your place. So you have to be careful about this situation. But for one of the foreigner, he said that actually I dine in with my friend in the restaurant. So we found that maybe The restaurant owner underreport some of the situation. And then we immediately come back to the restaurants and we found some people are actually dying in in the restaurant. And the owner said uh, he had nothing to do about it because their customers would like to die in in the restaurant. And later on, we also found uh, some of the friends of the restaurant owners also dined in in these small restaurants. And also some other people, for example, um, the owner's husband and husband's friends also dined in this restaurant. 
and all of these people will be identified as close contacts. And later on, we also identify some high-risk uh, public facilities. For example, some pubs as well as some supermarkets. So for all the cases who have been confirmed with COVID-19 infection, these people more or less visiting some of the public facilities. That's why right now we have to conduct a large scale screening and also we have to conduct a retrospective screening and testing to people who are arriving in Guangzhou start from March the 8th. For infectious disease, we have to follow the four early measures, that is the early detection, reporting, isolation, and the treatment. So I would say the second defensive line has been playing a key role in containing the virus. But I would not say we can complete the work for 100% because we are facing a lot of uncertainties and difficulties to identify all the suspected cases. I could only say a majority of the people can be checked and screened. And the third defensive line is that we will run nuclear acid tests and the screenings to people who went to hospital and who went to the fever clinics. For all of these people who are visiting these places, we will provide them with the nucleic acid test. As we just mentioned, uh, three people identified as COVID-19 infection after they visiting the fever clinics. So these people will be sent to a designated medical observation site. So they have to wait for the results to come out. That is to say, the epidemiology studies is very important in epidemic containment. So we have to identify these people as early as possible so that we can offer treatment to these people. So I just use an example about a restaurant. So that actually explains the process, how the epidemiology investigation works. As we continue our screening work, we may in the future have an increase of number of imported cases. So we have to remain vigilant and be prepared. So one feature is that uh, we found uh, uh, some cluster outbreak. For example, some people are actually living in a family and uh, these people are actually visiting some densely populated areas. They are forming gatherings and dining in with others. So this actually increased the risk of infection. So for the transmission route, it's mainly the close contact transmission. So for more the, resi uh, the majority of the residents, we have to uh, follow our guidance, for example, avoid gatherings and to exercise the social distance so that they can help you to protect yourself. If we found some of the confirmed cases visiting some public facilities, uh, we will conduct the disinfection to all of those places. And also we will conduct external environmental monitoring to test all of those environment to make sure that uh, every place is safe. Some people are worried about uh, being in contact with the virus in a public place. So start from the February the 13th, we started 
the external environmental monitoring, and this is ongoing. As of yesterday, we have over 550 staff from the CDC and collect over 14,000 samples from the external environment for the testing. For all of those samples are testing negative, that is to say, the disinfection in public areas is quite effective in Guangzhou city. And also we are focusing on the disinfection in the transportation hub as well as the international airport. All of this uh, disinfection has demonstrated good effect. So please rest assured to visit those public places. We have the cap capability to disinfect all of those public facilities. But at the same time, you have to mind your own hygiene and to take necessary preventive measures. Thank you for your detailed introduction. And thank you for Mr. Zhang's detailed introduction about the, the work that has been done. Uh, for example, we have do a lot of work in the three coverage and also taken a very large scale screening and testing to all the inbound travelers who are coming to Guangzhou city from March the 8th. Next question, please. With CCTV, my question is to Mr. Tsai. Uh, recently, um, I would like to understand the measures taken by the Public Security Bureau so especially measures taken towards the uh, foreigners who are staying in Guangzhou. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, since the outbreak of the epidemic, the Public Security Bureau in Guangzhou City is supported by the local residents as well as the foreigners. I would like to give a, uh, to say a big thank you to all of them. We have attached a great importance to the health and safety to all the people who are staying in Guangzhou, regardless of their nationalities. We have continued to follow the guidance provided by the provincial government. We are treating the Chinese nationals as equals with the foreign residents. And also called on the foreigners to abide by the constitution of China and the uh, asset and entry regulations in China, and they should not uh, disrupt the social order. Here, the Public Security Bureau would like to emphasize that for the foreigners, they can be checked by the Public Security Bureau. And for foreigners who are above uh, 16 year old, they have to bring their passports if they're going outside or residence permits. And they can be checked by the public security. For those who are not uh, able to offer identity proof, they will be receive a penalty from the Public Security Bureau in order to curb the infectious disease and protect the health and the safety of people. For all the foreigners who are staying in Guangzhou City, they have to follow the regulation of disease prevention and control in Guangzhou and cooperate with the epidemic prevention and control if these people are not cooperative, law enforcement agencies will offer education to these people. For these people who are refused to go to the quarantine centers, uh, these people will be charged by the Public Security Bureau and they will be sent to the quarantine center as well. 
if these people need to receive uh, medical treatment, the Public Security Bureau will offer support to these people. I hope all of you could understand the arrangements by the Public Security Bureau. Thank you for your question, and thank you for Mr. Tsai from the Public Security Bureau. And due to the interest of time, last question, please. With Nanfang Daily, my question is to Mr. Tang from the Guangzhou Health Commission. And recently, we found uh, many asymptomatic cases reported in Guangzhou. Can you tell us more about the current situation in Guangzhou city? Thank you for your question. I believe many Guangzhou residents attach great importance to this question. The Health Commission of Guangzhou City have published the Prevention and Control Protocol in the sixth edition of the protocol. It has a definition to the asymptomatic uh, patients. That is to say that these people do not have any symptoms for respiratory tract infection or fever. However, these people are testing um, positive for COVID-19 infection. So these people are classified as the asymptomatic patients. For the asymptomatic patients, they are contagious. However, we still see a lot of uncertainties about the capability of the transmissibility of the virus. We are still doing a lot of research on that. Currently, we have two ways to identify the asymptomatic patients. However, we are still lacking some effective way for the antibody testing uh, for these patients, so we are relying on the nuclear acid test to identify the asymptomatic patients. We have several ways to identify these people. First, we will conduct a large-scale screening to all the suspected groups of people. For example, we will conduct uh, the testing to close contacts to confirm cases. We will run nuclear acid tests to these close contacts of confirmed cases. And also, we will pay a lot of attention to people who are returning to Guangzhou city from Hubei province or Wuhan city. For this group of people, we will actually check their health code. When necessary, we will offer nuclear acid tests to these people and also we will screen the patients who are staying in the fever clinics. To all the fever clinic patients and if people have any travel histories overseas, and they will be receiving nuclear acid test. And for other hospitalized patients, they will be receiving nuclear acid tests where necessary. And also, we will screen out uh, those key facilities in the public. For example, for people who are arriving in Guangzhou from high-risk countries and high-risk uh, airlines, if they're visiting some of the hotels and the restaurants or the wholesale markets, and in these areas, there may be some potential close contacts. That is to say, the working staff were staying in those three areas. We will also roll out this large-scale screening to those people so that we could identify those asymptomatic patients. You also mentioned that uh, recently, in Guangzhou City, over 10 of asymptomatic cases reported 
This is because we have uh, strengthened our efforts in the screening of key groups of people, including people who have been testing at the entry ports. Two days ago in the press conference, I also talked about the screening of the key group of people. According to the epidemiological investigation, we also found that um, some of the airlines are of high risks. The ET-606 airline travel from Ethiopia to Guangzhou, and we found a lot of asymptomatic uh, patients in that airline. For people who are staying in the same airline, will be received nuclear acid test. And for certain countries, which we identify as high-risk countries, we will also identify uh, these uh, people coming to Guangzhou city. And Mr. Wen just uh, mentioned that the start from April the 5th, we will once again conduct the large scale screening to all of those inbound travelers. So for all the asymptomatic patients uh, reported recently, these people are detected by us. This is our way to curb the epidemic and curb this transmission of the virus because we are continue to carry out this large scale screening. So in the coming few days, we will continue to see the increase of imported cases. After we identify these asymptomatic patients, we will bring these people to isolation immediately. First, isolation. We will transfer these people to designated hospitals for medical observation, for investigation. For CDC, we will conduct epidemiology studies as soon as possible, and also we will track down to the close contacts of those suspected cases. And at the same time, we will conduct thorough disinfection to key and public facilities. And for the response, we will take street measures to treat these people as we treat the confirmed cases. We are continue our work in the large scale screening so that we can identify this asymptomatic patients as soon as possible so that we can reduce the risks of cross refection. If we found these asymptomatic patients as soon as possible so that we can mitigate the risk of the transmission of the virus in Guangzhou city. It is quite common to see some asymptomatic patients for infectious disease, and these people may be contagious. However, according to our data, as compared to the confirmed cases, there is a weaker transmissibility of the virus of the asymptomatic patients. For these asymptomatic patients, they do not have any symptoms. They do not suffer from coughing, fever, or coughing. So these people have a very effective metabolism and detoxification. So the transmissibility of the virus is relatively weak. So the virus can be transmitted through close contacts. 
were, if these people were staying in a close off restaurants or public facilities. As of now, oh, we do not see any virus transmission caused by the asymptomatic patients. But it is quite covered to identify these asymptomatic patients. That's why we have to follow the normalizing prevention and control mechanism to identify these people at the earlier stage, and then we could take a rapid response. So I call on all the Guangzhou residents to mind your own hygiene and to exercise social distance, avoid gatherings, wash your hands frequently, and to avoid going to the places that is densely populated. And please wear your mask and protect yourself. Thank you. So today we have all the speakers, including the mayor of Guangzhou City, uh, to brief you on the situation in Guangzhou. And for Mr. Wen has actually give you a thorough update about the current situation and measures taken to curb the imported infection and prevent the domestic resurgence. It also showcased the strong determination in Guangzhou to fight against COVID-19. And yesterday, in a party meeting conducted in Guangzhou City, we all know that right now it is our top priority to contain the epidemic. We will continue to follow uh, the guidance made by General Secretary Xi Jinping and put equal emphasis on the epidemic prevention and control and economic and social development. We will remain vigilant and never slacken our efforts and spare no efforts to win the battle against the epidemic. And we will make sure that we must not reverse the condition of the positive momentum of the epidemic prevention and control. That's the end of the press conference. Thank you.